Hello friends, welcome to YouTube channel Health Cube, the place where my mission is to motivate you to look at the brighter side of the health. Friends, in today's video, we are going to understand what is the difference between Bell's palsy, synkinesis and hemifacial spasm. These three problems sometimes might feel and look similar, but that could not be the case. And hence, having an information and understanding about these three problems is very important. Friends, these days, few patients came to me asking that they might be having some kinesis and what they should do about it. When, this, uh, when I spoke to them, what I realized was that they were thinking they have some kinesis, but it was not the case. They were actually suffering from hemifacial spasm. So, what is the difference between Bell's palsy, synkinesis and hemifacial spasm? Well, if you have seen my previous video in which I have already explained you the difference between Bell's palsy and synkinesis and now today I am adding the third component to it and that is hemifacial spasm. So, let's first begin with Bell's palsy. So, Bell's palsy is nothing but damage that happens to your seventh cranial nerve or as the facial nerve. Now this nerve has an, now this is the only factor which is common among all three conditions, which means in hemifacial spasm, in synkinesis, as well as in Bell's palsy, your seventh cranial nerve or is the facial nerve which lies behind your ear is somewhere affected or is having some problem. Now in Bell's palsy, mostly due to a sudden injury, due to a sudden climate change or temperature change, Due to a sudden drop in immune system or is due to a viral attack, a person develops injury or a swelling due to which there is pressure on the seventh cranial nerve. This leads to paralysis of one side of the face, also called as Bell's palsy. Even people who have got some sort of surgery around the head due to a tumor or some injury, even they might develop Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy in 90% of cases recover gradually if the medications are taken on time. In the case of facial palsy due to a tumor removal or as a head surgery in that scenario as well even you take medicines or not slowly slowly the movements start coming back to the normal as the pressure from the nerve gets off. But in some cases, in some people, the pressure doesn't come off completely within 72 hours due to which, the, due to which there is a delay in the recovery process. When there is this delay in the recovery process, what patient or as a person does is, in order to bring back movement, he tried very forcefully to finish a task on the face, which could be either raising of eyebrows, which could be either smiling, which could be either laughing or making separate facial movements. When a person is unable to do that, and then also he just forcefully try to do those movements, what you happen to do is you activate your voluntary brain, the brain which thinks and does movement. Usually in our facial muscles, we are more dependent on our involuntary brain or as our emotional centers. Do you remember before Bell's palsy, you have ever thought of a movement and done it? Most of the movements that we do on the face are not thoughtful movements but a spontaneous movement but that come that becomes absolutely opposite when a person suffers from Bell's palsy he forces himself to do lots and lots of voluntary facial movements now as the movements start recovering as the patient recovers gradually become uh, gradually the movements becomes more visible patients gets the positive feedback the brain gets positive feedback that okay this is the way if i do my muscles will move. So that's why anytime, even it's a spontaneous movement or it's a voluntary movement, you tend to depend more on the voluntary center. This becomes an activity which is an habitual activity now. So subconsciously or consciously, now you have developed a habit of over contraction or its mass movement of the face which means whenever you are trying to smile you will also contract your forehead muscle you will also contract your chin muscles you will also contract your neck muscle when this continues for a very long period of time 
it turns up into a very hardcore habit which is subconsciously deeply just gone into your which has subconsciously and deeply have become a part of your life and this then gradually becomes into synkinesis synkinesis on contrary to the bell's palsy is not weakness of the muscle but overactivity of the muscle i'm not saying that these muscles are not weak yes there could be a weakness component but more than weakness component it's the mass movement or overactivity component and the another problem with synkinesis is that your voluntary area of the brain is overpowering your emotional or else your subconscious area this is the reason why synkinesis happen but when it comes to hemifacial spasm which looks very similar to the synkinesis which means a patient who suffers from hemifacial spasm also develops gradual twitching or a fasciculation around the eyes whenever they try to attempt a movement before that attempt itself the eye becomes smaller and the mouth starts pulling up and as the stress increases these movements become more and more and more visible to an extent that sometimes without doing anything also the spasms increase to so, such a deep extent that it leads to some mental issues for the patient like depression anxiety and even sometimes suicidal thoughts but these patients usually don't have proper guidance also this is a rare problem the solution awareness is not present much even in the medical community and that's why you need to reach out to some of the experts in the space who are working with neurological disorder unfortunately from an exercise perspective there is not much you can do for hemifacial spasm but there are some methods with which you can reduce the hemifacial spasm but before that you should understand what exactly happens when there is hemifacial spasm when well, in hemifacial spasm unlike there is damage to the facial nerve that happens in the bell's palsy in hemifacial spasm there is the artery which lies around your facial nerve is pulsating so high that it is irritating your facial nerve which means if for example this finger is your nerve and this finger is the artery now this artery has kind of gradually moved and is very next to your nerve so whenever it is pulsating it is causing irritation to the snow and the snow then gets more irritable and causes spasm this is an hypothesis which has been considered to be the cause of hemifacial spasm now coming to the solution there are three most important solution that exist right now in order to manage, manage hemifacial spasm the first and the foremost i would say is the surgical option where you need to see not a neurologist but a neurosurgeon the neurosurgeon can surgically create a space between facial nerve as well as the artery and thus remove the irritant and that's why patients see a lot of good results immediately hence i would highly recommend that if you are suffering from hemifacial spasm if your doctor has said you that yes you are having hemifacial spasm see a neurosurgeon that will definitely help you out the second method is botulinum toxin or as botox injections now botox injections are given to calm down the face to reduce the overactivity on the facial muscles so the patient observes an immediate result and reduction in the spasm episodes but the problem with botox is just that that it has a duration of 3 to 4 months after that the effect goes away and you need to take botox therapy again and the third and the most important which i believe is the best way to deal with hemifacial spasm in the long term is meditation if you meditate on a regular basis your face muscles stay calm there is less irritation on the nerve as well as in the arteries and your facial muscles are not that hyper reactive because remember your face is the combination of your emotions as well as your volition because your face is the combination of your voluntary area where you think and do the movement as well as your subconscious or its emotional area whenever there is a mismatch you see some weird facial expressions happening so if you you want so if you want to reduce them try to calm your facial muscles down try to calm yourself down and 
try to live a very gentle, deep and quiet lifestyle which is away from distraction, irritation, hyper excitability etc. For which exercises, gentle regular daily exercises, good diet which is full of plant based proteins as well as regular meditation is the best way for. This was an informative video just to give an idea about the difference between Bell's palsy, hemifacial spasm and synkinesis. Even though hemifacial spasm and synkinesis look not the same, but they are not the same. And that's why ruling out is very important. I hope you found this video helpful. If yes, make sure to like this video, share this video with your friends and family members and do not forget to subscribe to HealthQ channel. I'll see you in another video. Thank you.